the DNA bookshelf. The DNA bookshelf answers Dorothea McKellar. The oldest book says the pounding of waves is like the maternal heartbeat. A later book says misty rain is safe and friendly. Lush green fields are friendly, but not always safe. Soggy ground, rock fences are normal. Those texts might have come from Ireland or England, not Australia. Here the paddocks are often straw, hard dirt underfoot. Eucalypts appear in a later book about homeland. Newly emancipated convicts might have written that one, north of Hobart. Sandstone bluffs strut across the next book. This is a part inventory of what is written. Not disconnected, somehow coherent. It has always been and still grows. Traces. A dream clouded figure treads the land across the waters where lumps of our clay were dug from beneath the green cap sod ancestors left in hunger. While I muse in the shade of a eucalypt, a distant stone-built voice murmurs I should understand. While not being born through her, often I see through her eyes, value unknowing with her mind, speak in the tones of her voice. Starlight. The noise is curious. I am drawn to look, to ghost through the garden edged with cold and dew, in early morning night with no moon or electric light, with no clouds or factory haze. Constellations are bright across the acrylic sky. Above the horizon, a red star hovers like a sentry, while night shines half day from starlight. I have seen this sky before, above a country river. Misty landfall, a quarry island's craggy charm lingers from sub-Antarctic summers that leniently rained from a cloud that camped above, as in a Jolliff cartoon. In windy mist and rare sunshine, I surveyed on the rubble-strewn plateau, cocooned but soggy, while my field clothes rotted slowly. Sir Douglas Mawson had been there before to make notes about mysterious rocks later called ocean crust. They were the reason for my search. When it rained hard, I fled to a field hut to read a fantasy trilogy, while elephant seals snorted and fidgeted against the wall outside, enduring their molt. Seal and penguin industries had long since died. Their boilers corroded on beaches like bones of extinct giants. The island is a wildlife reserve. Seabirds make their nests on cliffs where rocks crumble. For me, it held a mystic sense of emergence. Ever Daddy, you arrived late. We were so relieved to meet you. My greeting was affectionate, a little formal. Mother was the nexus of your needs. In later years, I think you found me always there, a warm armchair to comfort hopes. P. 
Perhaps I was a key to the other world that fired on different fuel. Proof there was a door. Thresholds could be crossed. Partnerships could be sealed. Even now, for you a woman with your own child, I am never dad, ever daddy. Searching for a map. Could anyone believe a butterfly was once a caterpillar if the cycle was not known? Would the dry wheat have seemed only that before ancestral hunters saw the wild grain growing tall shoots again? We watched life metamorphose and cycle to renew nature, so I asked myself, what happens as we die? body and spirit in curved time. Is the glint of a new changed life shining to grow? We watch human knowledge surge like a tsunami. What isn't known surely looms behind as agnostics wonder, the natural children of this age of information. Beliefs persist in history, often for millennia, nurtured, inherited, Theists pray to their God. Do they speak to another life form, to other dimensions? Atheists argue with theists and hold with conviction. The facts for proofs are seen in nature. Ancestors knew the earth was flat, the centre of creation. Heavens, the homes of gods and spirits. Spiritual reality, the theologians and shamans. Around our earth is universe, mass and energy studied by science. Shapes of globe and outer space look no longer mystery. Is the inner space mystics and poets glimpse the unknown realm where nature, bodies and minds touch spirit and Godhead in a struggle to understand, to be fulfilled, a realm not yet measured like the universe to draw lines for its map. This coast swells for running strangely smooth until the weather gods called out westerly gale, wrecking seas, white caps froth on waves that heave at grey skies, spray throws mist to mock the rain, winds steer the ship at the shore, anchors begin their lurching slide, drift gains sway, hours count down to doom. Breakers attack sharp black predators that loom killing close, no land creatures wait to watch, seas slowly calm, the wind fades. Not this time the end of ship of me. But I am bound to work this coast. Encounter. Great to see you, but it's more than that. It's slipping back to bask once more in common essence. Easy to talk with heads immersed in shared consciousness recognised, often instantly, if met before or not. But when the common link is less, the resonance might still grow with time to tune like a radio. So hard to leave, again to trip over words 